take from Jordan. Uh, I don't know if uh, all of you know Jordan, but uh, there is information about uh, Jordan, as you will see in the, uh, the slide does not appear, excuse me. Yes, uh, we are very proud that we have one of the uh, seven wonders in the world. It's called Petra and called uh, Red City or Pink City. It's an amazing city. Welcome to, to visit Jordan to see it. Uh, and uh, it's my pleasure to be with you today in person to present for you our experience in using big data and non-traditional data uh, uh, during COVID and uh, to evaluate and uh, to measure the effectiveness of the policies that uh, uh, implemented during uh, COVID uh, pandemic from the decision makers, from the uh, government at that time. Actually, this project was an initiative from ESQA for Jordan and Lebanon in parallel with uh, each other as a one team. Uh, it start on uh, September, and uh, in September last year, and it is uh, was the first uh, the first experience for Jordan to implement big data and to use the big data in actual pilot or an actual uh, project in the Jordan. But I want to give you a brief about our uh, initial in this uh, concept of big data. Uh, since a couple of years, maybe uh, 2019, it was my first interesting about this concept. Uh, I was uh, in conference in Kigali about uh, big, da uh, big data, and uh, I saw how much it's very uh, interesting and it's very important to use the uh, big data in the as a supplement of our data, as official data, to uh, provide the decision maker by more uh, data or more actual uh, uh, useful uh, analysis to help them to uh, take a, a right uh, decisions. But at that time, we faced many, many of challenges. We, the most of these challenges was the lack of knowledge. What is big data? What is exactly big data? Are we all of us familiar with this concept? I don't know uh, if all of you experience uh, or experts in this concept, but for us at that time, uh, we haven't any knowledge of this big data. As I, I am IT director and IT person, I was very excited to implement a new technology. And I want just to implement any technology at that time. But for statistician persons, they want me to stop, stop here. Why you want to use this big data? Yes, they are this logic. Uh, are we need re, uh, big data? It is uh, added value for our job. Uh, are we have the ability to start with big data? And there is, uh, we face many of uh, uh, resist change and uh, challenges of it is need fund or not. Uh, the management very, very difficult to convince them by this concept as uh, they have to make many processes before this decision uh, about fund, about uh, papers, about uh, agreement, m many things. Uh, and uh, as you know, as a statistical office that produce uh, official numbers and official indicators, it was very difficult to convince them to use non-traditional data and trust this data to produce indicators. Uh, especially we introduce many sensitive numbers like poverty and uh, like uh, employment and unemployment. So that's why we start at that time to uh, increase our knowledge of big data, make many interviews with companies, with experts, what is the big data, what we can, how we can start, uh, what we need. And, uh, and we, uh, at that time, uh, the recommendation was to start small, like data warehouse, and uh, have a capacity building of 
machine learning, deep learning, deep analysis, and then go to another uh, stage. And yes, we have a knowledge that big data will uh, added value for our work as uh, the big data will make availability of real-time data, quick access to results, support statistical data with unconventional data, reduce the cost of data collection. Maybe at first it will be costing, but uh, for the future it will be reduced the cost. Uh, deeply analysis, forecasting, and keep up with technology. After that, during this time, um, pandemic, uh, the pandemic, COVID pandemic occurred, and, and in spite of the bad side effects of this pandemic, but we can say, see, we can say that it was the reason, and the, uh, the only reason, that accelerate, accelerate the using of big data for us. Yes, because many of NGOs like uh, ESQUA, and like uh, UNDP, UNSD, start the many initiatives to support Jordan and support uh, many countries to implement this data or this technology to support the decision makers by actual and real data during this challenge time that we couldn't uh, arrive the uh, traditional data and we couldn't go to the field to collect our data. So uh, the, this project objectives uh, uh, have two main objectives. Uh, the first objective was to evaluate the effectiveness of sets numbers of government policies, uh, and the other object to develop a prototype uh, of platform for policymakers. This platform it have to be used from the decision makers from uh, many ministries in Jordan and uh, in Lebanon. We start the methodology by uh, select the policies that implemented in Jordan. Uh, at that time, when we started this project, it was uh, more than 40 policies. But we couldn't start with uh, each of those policies but because in this time, many of these policies was not uh, permanent and um, some of them not, uh, not uh, success. So we have to choose the most important. Uh, policy, it was five policy. And then we decomposed this uh, policies to uh, indicators to evaluate these indicators and mapping the non traditional to these policies. So for Jordan, the five policies was uh, as uh, seen in the slide. Uh, the first one about the cash transfer distribution. Uh, it's about, it's uh, 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 charity institute, charity institute, but it's supported. It's private, but supported by government. Uh, the other uh, policies was about education, and uh, we uh, uh, Jordan uh, produced the platform Darsak. It's called Darsak. This is for all students to go. Uh, to this platform and take their lessons and contact with their uh, schools and their teachers by this platform. The third one is about cash transfer distribution. Uh, also, it's about uh, distribute uh, money. Uh, and uh, uh, it was to see who's, who's the people that most poverty and most uh, need of the, uh, of the help in this time. The fourth one is about disability. Disability person was a very uh, important uh, uh, issue that, at that time because uh, maybe they will need uh, medicine, they will need help, they will, and in this challenge time, they couldn't uh, reach their uh, needs. Uh, the, uh, the last one is about support small companies that uh, the most affected area of uh, pandemic COVID at that time. So after, after uh, choose the policies and uh, we, we, meet, we make many, many meetings to uh, choose these policies and uh, make a, 
the opinion uh, take opinion from many ministries about these policies if that's okay or there is more important of this after this we uh, start to analyze these policies and to uh, see who's the owner of each policy what the uh, area that each policy cover and uh, the stakeholder related for each this policy and what the data source available for us to take and start our work in this project. And then we start to determine what the social media exactly for each policy. So what we can use, uh, GDALT, Google Trend, Facebook, Satellite Image, uh, Twitter, uh, all of this was available, as you know, during uh, COVID. And we try to uh, to determine which the platform, uh, which the uh, source exactly for each policy. Here we try to combine exactly this policy with this uh, data source, like data Twitter. It's uh, it's compatible with all of these policies. Uh, Google Trend. It's compatible with all uh, these uh, uh, policies. So it wasn't difficult to combine between the policies and the uh, social media. But the challenge was the uses of this internet or this is social media. Like Twitter, it's not used, uh, not familiar too much in Jordan. So it wasn't too much help, but maybe in other areas it uh, will be help. Uh, after that, we try to define the topics and the keywords to determine the keywords for each policy in Arabic and in English to measure the sentiments for each policy from the all people. Are, are they uh, comfortable with this policy? Are they comfortable with the government process during pandemic or no? This is type of the analysis that we did during this project to uh, to measure how much the uh, frequencies of the, these uh, words. Here I want to uh, present some of examples that we implemented during uh, this uh, project. This example about the measure of poverty sentiments. Uh, and uh, we can see the results from the social media and the news confirm the population concern about the current economic situation as well as the needs of provide adequate material support and support to the en uh, entire population in general goals. So, you know, during this COVID, not all people uh, uh, commitment in the stay at home because it will affect their economic issues. This is another example from GDELT uh, social media and um, it's a major the negative feeling that expressed the, uh, in all categories are high with a peak in June. If you see it is, it's by date. So it was a high uh, in June, a rise in, uh, in the positive sentiment index in mid of July. So it depends on the decisions. If the people are com uh, comfortable with some decision, you will see the sentiments is high positive. And if the opposite, if the decision uh, was not good, like uh, sometimes when, uh, uh, when they produce the bread in some areas and not in all areas, we will see w which area or which uh, uh, date that the sentiments was not good or not comfortable. This is the example of the charity decade that we uh, uh, that I mentioned before. Uh, this is the first uh, policy I mentioned. Uh, by this uh, policy we can rec make recommendation to compare available data with the aid distributed in terms of individuals and target locations. So we can determine if all people have the help from this charity or there is some 
people have been this help and need more. And the website of this ticket uh, of this uh, charity was uh, very helpful for us to compare our data by the actual data from their website. This is the uh, DARSAC uh, policy about education. And uh, this is comparison, a comparison between the all platform that uses it during pandemic. Yes, a government uh, use uh, a DARSAC platform for all people or, or for all government schools, but there is a private school using another platform, their own platforms, and we can see the comparison of use the government platform and the other, and this maybe helps the decision maker if this, it is success more than other or not. Another example of our analysis during this project about the mobility during uh, pandemic and uh, how it's in, uh, decreased sharply during uh, lockdown. There's no movement during lockdown of, uh, in, from March to mid of uh, April, I think. And what the benefit of this uh, mob mobility results the results are presenting needs of people to go out to work, and it's uh, recommended to do supporting economically uh, affected individual is critical. Uh, identify high traffic population to provide support and advice to reduce the potential risk. If, uh, so from this results, the government will have uh, a knowledge that they have to support awareness of how much risk for the people to move up or to go out, and why, what are the reasons for these people that make them not commitment and not stay at home at the pandemic in spite of the risk that they have. Uh, now we, uh, we will come to the uh, platform, the, uh, the second uh, target of our uh, project. And who, who will use this platform? Why we produce this platform? This platform is uh, developed for the civil, uh, civil, civil uh, servants dealing with assistance, social, economic risk, or shocks, uh, national statistic office, uh, ministries of planning, ministries of education, disaster management and uh, unit, uh, office of UN, uh, resident, uh, resident coordinator, uh, development by, uh, part, uh, partitions in the multilateral organizations and many, many of ministries need this platform to help it to go forward about what the needs during this pandemic. And the, uh, the most important point here that this platform is flexible, not just for the pandemic, because maybe we will say, okay, the pandemic is finished, and so is the project finished? Is the project end here? No. Uh, at, uh, when we produce the platform, uh, ESQA make uh, a capacity building for all of the stakeholders and ministries that will use this uh, platform and advise them to evaluate this platform and make suggestion for what we can use it again and we can put any new policies inside this platform. We can provide this platform by any uh, new policies to make it sustainable, not just for this pandemic. And each stakeholder, each ministry can customize their own platform to help their needs, not just uh, uh, in general. And this platform can uh, use uh, as a regular user from uh, one side. The other side, there is administra administrator to make this customization and to create user and to do all uh, management things uh, related to this platform. In this platform, we use Twitter. And uh, uh, in spite of, I mentioned that Twitter not, uh, 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 not used uh, too much in Jordan, but 
in other countries it will be good so uh, and because this uh, platform not just for two country it can be added any countries and the project will distribute it to other countries after success of this uh, project so uh, the twitter will select the cat uh, categories of interest for example education economic employment and select the time of period that we need of this policy and after that we can see from the chart uh, the chart or the uh, infograph that uh, appeared uh, what the sentiments during this policy or during this uh, uh, decision And uh, um, we, we will focus on now casting because we uh, we uh, talking about the actual data during the real time, not after the uh, the pandemic happened or after the decision made uh, months or years or like this. So the user is able to select the temporal uh, gradually of the now casting prediction monthly or quarterly. So, uh, for example, we will talk about employment and employment survey. It's a quarterly survey. So, after the user selects the month from 1 to 12, the platform returns the prediction means value and the credibility intervals for this value displays the trend uh, over time as well. So, by utilizing this, uh, tools before and after after the certain period uh, of policy implementation, the user is able to compare the effects of the specific policy on the new, now casting uh, unemployment rate. Here is an uh, example we implement actually at the uh, data that we have from employment and non-employment from the Department of Statistics and compare it with the prediction uh, process that we implemented during this uh, project and we can see how much it's uh, very close and it's give us uh, impression that maybe this data will be a good uh, alternative uh, during pandemic, uh, during uh, challenge time, uh, uh, during uh, difficult to access real data or it will maybe supplement for our data. Uh, in the platform, the first page or the home page, it will uh, uh, provide the users by the using of internet. Uh, it's, uh, as you say, uh, internet in general 67 at that time and if we want to see uh, Google uh, 97 Twitter uh, 9.5 this give you indicator and impression which of these social media will be success more than other what you will uh, decide to choose from this analysis so for Jordan Twitter was too low as you see and the Google search was high, so it's, it was very good. And uh, I think Facebook was very high also. This is the style of, uh, uh, of our platform. You can choose from here uh, any policies that, uh, any uh, social media that you want to use. And then use the country and the topic then the period that you want to uh, measure. And this is other example of uh, from uh, actual platform to measure the sentiments analysis of uh, uh, some of the policies. So it's worth to talk about the pros and the cons of the big data or uh, especially uh, a specific course that uh, non-traditional data. So if we want to talk about pros, 
as uh, we mentioned before, the access is to data in real time and in timely manner and during the period required for action and decision making. Uh, second is analyzing non-traditional data source make it easier to get more accurate uh, details because it's on time. Take advantage of big data source to respond to all challenges and the crisis such, uh, such as a large number of refugees in the country, evaluation analysis of policies adopted during the pandemic. Uh, but it, if we want to talk about the cons and what the challenges and what the risk of using uh, non-traditional data, so we can say that the non-traditional data for the most important source is only available during crisis. Yes, we, we, say, uh, we see that uh, Facebook allowed during pandemic to take the data from uh, the platform. But after that, it will be allowed or no, we don't know. And there is no strategy or no clear policy about at what time they will allow us to take this data and what the methodology that they implement to, take, to allow the data for the public. Suspend the concerned trends have been confirmed through social media such as Twitter. I told you about Jordan not using t uh, Twitter too much. Database due to technology depends on is calculated risk. Yes, because uh, not all people use the, this technology. Not uh, all people. Uh, the most uh, people have most challenges. They didn't have mobile, maybe. And very important, and we did that to to focus on ethical concerns. And we, we did that during project by uh, many meetings of uh, focus and uh, consider the ethical points. Uh, like potential bias uh, and the bias, uh, it's because not all data is, uh, can be trusted in the social media. Many of this data, it's fake, it's not true or just because they want to talk, they want to say anything because they're angry. Uh, data gaps, as, uh, as the disabilities of uh, the people of, with disabilities, they couldn't uh, have the same ability to access the, uh, all social medias. Uh, exclusions, people who don't have access to digital mobile media at all, and the data protection and privacy measure. This uh, one of the ethical points that we have to consider. And at this time, I want to focus on, as after this project, is the non-traditional data a good alternative for official data that we use in Department of Statistics and we collect from the field? I, I think in our opinion at this project, no. It is not a good alternative completely. Yes, we have to go to big data, we have to go to uh, a new technology, a new source. We have to make supplement for our data and increase the accuracy, increase the uh, value of our data, but it will be an uh, alternative just when difficult to access the real data, when difficult to access the actual data from the field, as what happened in the pandemic. But otherwise, we can use it, yes, as a supplement, as a giving added value, as a prediction, because the prediction will help us, yes, very well, to take uh, decisions before the problem happened. This will be very good, uh, but we couldn't uh, discard or ignore the actual and official data that we use in statistical offices. What next? Uh, here I want to talk about two, uh, two parts. The first, what next after this project? We finish this project and what the next? Uh, as I mentioned, this platform uh, is developed for the decision makers, many ministries. So what we did, we Send after the capacity building of them, we send this platform with username and password for each uh, for many of ministries to use it 
and to back with a feedback and suggestion to develop and improve this platform to customize by their own needs and uh, to, to make it more flexibility to add any decision uh, or any policies later. Uh, and the other part of what next about Department of Statistics, are we able now and have uh, uh, ex uh, accessibility, uh, accept the using of big data? Our management accepts this concept? Yes. After this project, some of, uh, uh, some of uh, thinking change to better. Yes, we now open more than before. We can use big data, but with concerns, with uh, careful how to use it, where, what, why. Yes, we, we have to be uh, very careful in using big data, but we are open now. And we have some of the projects with NGOs like uh, UNDB now. Uh, we have a project to make uh, a prediction of the prices consumer and uh, or scanning from the uh, big uh, malls or big supermarkets. This will be our uh, uh, a new project. And there is another project we have to make on the SDGs uh, about using big data and uh, to increase the uh, source of data for the SDGs. And uh, that's all of, from uh, my side. And thank you for your attention. <coughs> Thank you very much. That's okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, if uh, anyone have any question, I'm uh, open to hear you. Uh, yeah. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, my name is Mundir Ansari from uh, Ministry of Tourism in Saudi Arabia. Welcome. Uh, I saw that you use Facebook to track people mobilities in Jordan. Mm -hmm. Could you elaborate more? How did you use it? And what the difficulties you are faced with the implementation of this uh, uh, technology in tracking mobility in Jordan? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I want to mention an uh, important thing that this project implemented from uh, ESCO uh, and with the private company Datapop completely. Uh, and uh, after that, our uh, plan to make uh, uh, capacity building for the team at DOS to implement this. So uh, we didn't, as a team in the Department of Statistics, we didn't implement this uh, method, methods or this is algorithms for Facebook or Twitter or anything. But, but uh, I, I think uh, for, for this, the uh, challenge of the Facebook mobility was uh, not using the uh, mobile or the, uh, the Facebook or internet in all times. I, I think uh, many of times uh, there was uh, a gap, not to clear the data in all time for the people, but, but exactly uh, if you want the details, I can uh, contact you with the person that they develop and you can uh, take more uh, information about this. Because their object to uh, develop this platform for many countries. Thank you. Welcome. If not, it's okay. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank all of you.